Yes, so my name is Albert Nazarov. I am a naval architect and managing director of Albatross Marine Design from Thailand. Uh, so I'm here to give you some kind of alternative view on high-speed craft design because we are talking about uh, monohull craft for second day already, but let's look at the alternatives. Can I have a pointer as well? Yes. This one. So we will have a brief look at uh, the catamaran applications, review the stability issues, we'll touch the performance issues, and of course the sea keeping. That is a feature of catamarans. Uh, we'll take a brief look at the controllability and structures, and I will show also some design samples that we have done before or we are just planning to build. Uh, in total, we have our design office has about 30 catamaran designs, different catamaran designs in, in service, so that allows us to make some conclusions and some recommendations on the cats. Uh, so when average customer is start talking about cat, what what are the first issues that come in mind? First of all is the performance. That, of course, is if the cat is designed properly, you can get more speed or more fuel, more fuel efficiency. Then, very important feature of cats is soft ride. Catamarans ride very soft compared with the monohull craft. That's well known. Safety is provided by stability and uh, high freeboard and uh, basically duplicate systems because on the cat, everything is duplicate. And of course, the comfort, because we have uh, very large areas where you can use it for accommodations and whatever. If average catamaran can provide at least 30% more of usable deck space compared with a monohull craft. Uh, there are also some disadvantages. I won't list them here, but uh, uh, they are mostly related to the first is the cost, because the cats are more expensive. Uh, and secondly is the mentality, is the mentality, mentality of average user, because in many parts of the world, the users, they are not get used to the catamarans. And uh, in, in our parts of the world, we have, maybe of all of our design, we have 50% of catamaran designs. Uh, catamarans comprise 50% of our design commissions. So in our part of the world, we are using catamarans everywhere. Maybe we have to look at some alternatives in different locations as well. So, uh, talking about cats, let's look at the possible solutions with the hull shape. Here I just uh, uh, draw some uh, symmetrical catamarans, symmetrical hull shaped catamarans that can be round bilge and can be sharp chine. And there are also asymmetrical options. I showed two. This is basically an asymmetrical hull, and this is what we call split hull. It's like a mo mono hull split and center line and move aside. And uh, when we're talking about cats, we also operate su with such terms as uh, vertical clearance, that is uh, basically the distance from the water line to the tunnel top, and horizontal clearance, that is the distance between the inner sides of the house. Those are very important, and uh, proper selection of these parameters affects the efficiency of the catamaran design. Uh, where catamarans are used? Of, of course, they are used as pleasure boats. Uh, we have done quite a lot of pleasure cats, but uh, we have also designed quite a lot of uh, passenger cats, including small water taxis and some uh, passenger catamarans under high-speed craft code. But I think those are not, inter uh, not of much interest for, for this audience, probably. So we go directly to the professional boats. This is the catamaran, the 38-footer. Uh, that we have designed uh, back in uh, 2006. It's an ambulance boat. This boat is capable, it carries paramedical equipment, two permanent stretchers, and is designed to promptly reach the remote locations like some, some islands in, uh, in Andaman Sea and uh, uh, provide paramedical services. Uh, the boat is also known to be very successful as a uh, fast response craft because they can take, one, once they have taken 30 passengers from the bo suffered boat and keep them uh, until the uh, other, other vessels uh, reach the, the, the point. So, and this one is uh, another application that is a landing craft. Catamaran platform provides excellent platform for the, for the, for the bow ramp. You can make it wide, and it will not basically affect the sea keeping performance of the catamaran. And this is quite interesting boat that we have designed for our builder in China. That is a catamaran rib. Uh, you can see there is a D, excuse me. You can see there is a D tube here fitted, 
It's a cat, it's a stepped hull, and we have a bow ramp opening, so that allows really easy landing and uh, also it allows to uh, recover the people from the water. So let's look at stability issues. Uh, first of all, uh, I, ju I just pick up two stability curves for, different, for two different 50-footer designs. The green line is for our 50-foot uh, catamaran dive boat. The orange line is for our patrol boat. So you can see huge differences in stability in GZ, in the stability arm. And you can see the slope of the curve at the initial part of the curve. That is the characteristic of the GM, of uh, uh, metacentric height. So initial stability of CAT is tremendous. That allows you to operate this boat with, for example, with the, with the David, with cranes, or whatever kind of uh, operations, where you need to lift something heavy from the side. And uh, catamarans, uh, also, sometimes we can hear that catamarans are not perfect at, at large angles of uh, hill. But to, be, uh, to tell you the truth, uh, the regulators, they only care about stability up to 50 degree range. If we take the high-speed craft code, for example, they rate stability only up to 50 degrees. So the regulators, really, they don't really care what is here. And up to 50 degrees, we are still above the monohull range. So the stability is a strong point. And now let's look at the load carrying capacity. We know that the catamarans, average catamaran, uh, possess the water plane area that is about 30% lower than convertible monohull. Uh, so what does it mean? That means that load carrying capacity of, of the catamaran is lower. So if you are really looking for light weight applications or uh, volume restricted craft, then the cat is the right choice. But when you need to carry something heavy, the catamarans start losing their advantages very fast. Performance. Catamarans are, uh, are claimed to have high performance characteristics, but it's, I, I would say it's a partial truth. Because uh, the catamaran should be designed properly and for particular speed. Here I just uh, pulled two uh, resistance curves for, say, real-life 8-meter catamarans. Uh, this one is uh, the, uh, sorry, for, for real life, 8 meter monohull and catamaran. Uh, the, the green line is a cat and the orange line is a monohull. We have the resistance curves here and we've got the trim angles here as well. So you can see that catamarans operate at higher trim angles. That uh, is more efficient operation of the lifting surface. But on the other side, there is certain range where catamarans have advantage. It's usually at a bit lower speeds. But at high speeds, the monohull will have advantage. At certain point, they will basically collapse in one line. So we always need to see whether the application of CAT is reasonable in this speed range. But what I can say that the main advantage of the catamaran is not the uh, is not the is not higher speed. Is the ability to maintain this speed in the worst sea state conditions that we will look after. Uh, so. Talking about catamarans, why do we have these, uh, these differences in the curves compared with the monohull craft? This is the, basically the resistance, the formula for the total resistance of the cat. We have the same values as ones for monohull, that is a residual resistance and friction resist resistance, but we have this additional value that is called RC, that is a, a specific resistance of a cat, and this is due to the hull interaction. The other Parameters are just, just the same. It's a appendage drag, aerodynamic drag, and uh, additional drag on the waves. So this RC can comprise up to minus 5 to plus 20% of total resistance for plane cats. For the displacement cats, it's a wider range. It can be from minus 10 to 40%. So to get proper design, we always have to play with a particular arrangement and particular speed and see how we can benefit from, from, this, uh, from these values. Here should be my, uh, my video. So with this, uh, the video showing the flow in the tunnel of uh, eight meter cat. And uh, yeah, that's, that's what's happening in the tunnel. One might ask why didn't we make a uh, film it at uh, some, some wave, but uh, we lost one camera already. So I don't, really want, I don't really want to lose another one. So it's about 30 knots speed. You can see this, this flow here. Definitely there is some interaction. There, there are 
three factors of interaction. There is interaction of wave systems, there is I increased flow that will affect the frictional drag, and there is a wash of the tunnel. Some uh, badly designed cats, they actually ride on the tunnel. So that is a serious defect. Uh, if the catamaran starts riding on the tunnel, so the tunnel is used to produce the lift. So it's likely the catamaran will be overweight or uh, the vertical clearance is too low. Okay. So in our practice, uh, we used to perform careful analysis of the performance. Mm, so we use different methods. Uh, the one of the most widespread methods for round build shapes is a Molen series that is quite known and uh, gives a reliable prediction in uh, semi-displacement speed range. Then there is a quite interesting uh, series uh, tested in Germany. It's called Müller Graph series. And uh, it deals with uh, sharp chine catamaran semi-displacement house. Uh, and it gives uh, quite reliable prediction. We have validated it recently. And uh, then there is another method that is called PAMS method. But I think the method itself was developed by in uh, uh, Australian Maritime College. And it gives quite good prediction, though it was, uh, it's uh, partly a theoretical method because they use the uh, serious, serious test by ship, uh, ship flow, that is a CFD code. And for, of course, for the planning cats, there are modifications of Savitsky method with some correction factors. And of course, we have our own method to evaluate the performance. We have done the diagram that gives you allows you to make quick estimate of uh, speed uh, with the inputs of uh, uh, water line length, the displacement, and horsepower. S here is a sample of analysis we performed for one of our designs. Uh, we just study what, what kind of hull shape would have a preference at, uh, certain at certain weight and certain speed range. So we can see that, uh, for example, here, uh, we have blue, blue lines, they refer to sharp chine hull. And the uh, red line, they refer to uh, round bilge. You can see that these two lines are for heavy displacement, and these two lines are for lighter displacement. You can see that they intersect in, in some point that shows us the speed where the sharp chine hull will start getting advantage. The lighter is the cat, the higher speed you can get with a uh, round bilge shape. Okay, now we come to, this, to the interesting issue that is sea keeping. That's uh, everyone is discussing here. And we have done our own tests on our catamarans with acceleration gauges. We always perform it during the sea trials. So uh, the first and most important, uh, what we have studied comparing uh, the monohulls with the cats is that average catamaran possess 30 to 50 percent lower vertical accelerations compared with the monohull craft. That is a, a serious improvement of the uh, so uh, com comfort of ride. Uh, why does it happen? It's a bit of formulas again. It's a quite quite well known formula. This is called Savitsky Brown formula. is for uh, formula for vertical accelerations on the planning hull, uh, depending on the board particulars. So uh, basically, how we can affect, how we can reduce this part. We can see clearly that. We can, either uh, we can either reduce beam of chine, or we can reduce uh, the. We can increase the dead rise. Beta is the dead rise. That's exactly what we have on the cat. Here I show the uh, dead rise distribution on the eight meter catamaran is a green line, 8 meter catamaran, and blue line is 8 meter monohull. And here, this is the bow. Imagine this is the bow, this is the transom of the craft. So we've got our major wave impact area here. You can see that on the cat, the dead rise angles at the bow are much higher. Uh, also, you can see that th this is actually the, our tests of the uh, transparent uh, model, so it's it just an illustration of the wave impact area. You see where it happens. It happens from station two to eight. Uh, and why can we have uh, high dead rise angles on the cat? Because stability is not provided by the hull shape. It's provided by the separation of the hulls. 
so we don't have the stability issues on the cat. We can increase the dead rise, we can get softer ride. And of course, on a cat, we can get reduced chine beam. Uh, because in this formula, we have this parameter that is chine beam. On a cat, yes, it's double, but uh, total altogether is still less than on, on the monohull. So these are two major factors that affect the smoothness of ride on the cat. And here we have uh, done some measurements of longitudinal distribution of accelerations in different points of the ball. So say it's, this one was the FP point, it was the CG point, and it was the transom. Also, uh, important note that because when we measure the accelerations, we usually place the acceleration gauge on the bulkhead, on the bulkhead that goes all the way through to the bottom. This way we get actual accelerations, uh, not the accelerations you get from the vibration of the structure. And uh, controllability of CAD is also another issue. Uh, most of people have heard that uh, the catamarans are difficult to turn, that maneuverability suffers. I would say that controllability is a controversial qu quality. It consists of maneuverability and uh, directional stability. So once our maneuverability is increasing, uh, our directional stability usually will reduce. So on a CAD, we can get the optimum uh, rela uh, optim optimum relation of the both. Uh, we have tested a uh, few cats, uh, but um, the most interesting is that uh, we have designed few catamarans with similar dimichals but with a different uh, horizontal clearance. Here are the same results. So we can make some conclusions on uh, how it will affect the controllability of the craft. First of all, why the catamarans? Why the catamarans? have higher turning radius. So they are more difficult to turn. Why the catamarans are more difficult to turn? Um, usually the steady turning radius of the cat is between three to five, uh, steady, uh, uh, turning diameter of a cat, this dimension, is usually three to five lengths of the hull. That is, that is acceptable and quite compatible with the mono. Uh, also, Catamarans heal slightly during turn, not uh, like a monohulls that he will heal significantly. Say for most of uh, real life maneuvers of the catamarans, the heel angle does not exceed uh, two to five degrees. That makes them perfect for uh, personal transportation as a passenger craft and other kind of, kind of other applications. Um, and of also, very important is that this transverse acceleration during turn, when the catamaran is turning, you have the centrifugal force and the people are getting shifted on the side. So uh, I think this will add to your presentation because this value is uh, uh, actually uh, regulated in the high speed craft code and it should not exceed 0.2 G. So on the monohull, side acceleration can easily exceed this value. On a cat, I would say it would never exceed this value for normal, for real life maneuvers. And of course, catamarans possess very uh, excellent maneuverability at slow speeds because you can just reverse the, one of the engines, you can turn it on, on one place. That can be done on the monohull only in case if you use the bow thruster. On most of monohulls, you can't do that. Uh, so, and the structural issues, uh, of course, when we design the cats, there are some specific loads. Uh, there are loads that are similar to monohull craft, the loads on the bottom, on the sides, on the deck. And there is also a specific load for on, on the tunnel. This is a wave slamming load. Uh, and there is usually specified by rules of classification societies or, or some standards. And there is also general strength requirements that uh, from our experience, are not, not the issue on most of craft below 24 meters. And let's look at some um, perspective applications. We have done a few, few concepts recently that might be uh, usable as uh, professional boats. Uh, and uh, here is the uh, firefighting, small firefighting and the rescue boat intended mainly for the rivers and, uh, uh, and, and lakes. It can be uh, transported by railway. Uh, it, it has the 
side opening for the water recovery can carry kind of vehicles and we have two uh, fire pumps here to a place for stretchers so that might be an interesting application once it happened. This also could be good both for the marina security because we have number of fires in the marinas that uh, no, they, are so, they are so getting so tight now so no, no regular fire boat can get inside and you really need to pull the, uh, the burning boat out and uh, firefight. So that, that's an interesting application for this craft. Um, this is uh, our beach rescue catamaran based on our successful eight meter hull. Uh, just, just for beach patrol for these kind of operations. And this is the development we have done for, I think for the, Mal for the Malaysian police. This is as asymmetrical hull shape uh, kind of patrol boat with twin 350 horsepower outboard engines. Uh, might happen one day. So these are the uh, main points. Uh, I think that uh, we're still looking for get more catamarans in different parts of the world operating as special craft and uh, as professional boats. And if you have any particular issues, uh, questions, I, I just listed a number of my publications that you can find them and you can read it in, in more detail. And of course, any questions are welcome. Thank you.